Hello! Let's take a look at some more reactions in aqueous solutions. One type of reaction that is very common in this category is a redox reaction. A redox reaction can be identified when the charges of particular atoms or ions in the reactants are different from those in the products. Let's look at an example to see what this means. When zinc reacts with hydrochloric acid, we know it forms hydrogen and a salt. In this case, the salt is zinc chloride. Now, let's look at the charges of these atoms and ions. Since zinc is an element on its own, it has a zero charge. A hydrogen ion has a charge of plus one, while a chloride ion has a charge of negative one. Now, let's look at the products. Zinc is now bonded with chlorine atoms to form a zinc chloride compound. The zinc has become an ion with a charge of plus two. The chloride ion still has a charge of negative one, but you will notice that there are two chloride ions joined to the zinc ion. Finally, the hydrogen molecule is now by itself and therefore has a zero charge. Now look at these charges. See if there has been a change in the charges of the atoms or ions as they went from reactants to products. The zinc went from having a charge of zero to a charge of plus two. At the same time, the hydrogen went from having a charge of plus one on the reactant side to having a zero charge on the product side. The zinc lost two electrons to become positively charged, while the hydrogen gained two electrons to become neutral. Thus, this is a redox reaction. Now, let's look at a redox reaction that is very useful to mankind. We will do an experiment where we split ordinary water into its base components. As you recall from our previous lessons in this series, electrolysis occurs when we send an electric current through a solution. To do this, we need a battery as our power supply. We also need two electrodes which we will place in the water. We have added a few drops of sulfuric acid to the water. This increases the ionization of the water in order to get the reaction started. To do this experiment, we connect the electrodes to the battery using the copper wires and place them in the water. Then we leave it all for a few minutes so that the reaction can take place. What do you think will form at the electrodes as the water breaks up? If you look carefully, you will see that bubbles are forming on both electrodes. Now, let's confirm what has formed at each electrode. We know that the water molecule is made up of hydrogen and oxygen atoms. We use a test tube and carefully collect the gas that bubbles off the electrode connected to the negative end of the battery. Which gas do you think it is? Hydrogen or oxygen? Since this electrode is connected to the negative end of the battery and since hydrogen ions are positive, we can deduce that this should be the electrode where hydrogen is given off. Let us now test to see if hydrogen is given off. Do you remember how we test for hydrogen? We should hear a popping sound when we place a lit splint into the test tube of gas. We could hear that popping sound so we know that hydrogen is given off at the electrode connected to the negative terminal. Now, since the water molecule consists of oxygen and hydrogen atoms, the gas given off at the positive electrode is likely to be oxygen. But let us check to see if this is true. We again collect the gas given off at the positive electrode. You will note that there are fewer bubbles of gas at this electrode. Can you think why this would be? The water molecule is made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. When the water is broken down into its component parts, there is one oxygen atom for every two hydrogen atoms bubbling off. Now let's see if this is indeed oxygen gas being given off. I hope you can remember how to test for oxygen. We lower the glowing splint into the test tube and we can see that it does burn more brightly. Therefore, by electrolysis, we have broken down water into hydrogen and oxygen. So we know that there is an electrolysis reaction. But how can we be sure that it is a redox reaction? The chemical equation can confirm this. The chemical equation for this is water breaks into hydrogen and oxygen. Now, let's look at the charges. In water, hydrogen has a charge of plus one. Since there are two hydrogen ions, we must write two times plus one. 
Oxygen, as we know, has a charge of negative 2, so it loses 2 electrons, so that water is neutral. Both hydrogen and oxygen form diatomic molecules and therefore are neutral. Therefore, they each have a zero charge. The hydrogen has gone from a charge of plus 1 to 0, so it has gained a negative electron to become neutral, while the oxygen has gone from negative 2 to 0. There has been a transfer of electrons in this reaction, so it is definitely a redox reaction. So to sum up what we have learned, a redox reaction occurs when there is a transfer of electrons. This transfer of electrons is the driving force of the reaction. Grade 10s, you'll find more information about reactions in aqueous solutions on the Mindset website. Remember to do the questions in the task video. Goodbye!